Who is Commissioner Andrea Herr? Welcome to another episode of You Can't Make This Shit Up with your host, David Washington, Joel Hoxley, and our special guest, and we're so thankful to have Commissioner Andrea Herr. Would you introduce yourself? Happy to introduce myself. Thank you for having me. I Thank appreciate you. the opportunity to be here. I am the commissioner for District 5 in Seminole County. I was elected in 2020 for the first time. If anyone would have ever asked whether or not I would be in public office at any point, Point in time during my entire life, everyone would have said no. Mm -hmm. I, by day, am an executive vice president with Highland. Highland is one of the country's largest privately held insurance agencies. And I specialize in two things, employee benefits for very large clients, as well as investigating, implementing, implementing and executing cost containment programs for the healthcare spend, where we improve quality of care for patients and reduce cost for employers. Well, Commissioner, you've had a, a number of accomplishments over the years, and so... The many, many years. <laughs> many, many. Look, you caught yourself. You caught himself. I watched that. You're good. I'm proud of those years. <laughs> and, and so it's kind of, you know, natural for you to serve your community as a public official. What's the difference between serving your community in this manner versus the private sector? Well, it's interesting. You have a, I think you have a broader impact on a broader portion of the population. And to that degree, you have less impact, right? You're, I don't have the ability to make a decision. I'm one of five decision makers in a governing role. We are not a strong mayor system. So our elected officials are governing, not managing. We employ a CEO and a county attorney, and they really run the operation. 100% of the employees buckle up under them. And so my influence, the sphere of influence is much greater in terms of uh, impact to the community, but my ability to actually make something happen within the speed of light doesn't exist. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, I would just ask, uh, since you've uh, been on the commission, what was the the most, uh, what, were, what, what was the thing that kind of surprised you the most? I mean, because you were prepared for this, but what, what was it that in government you didn't really expect right away? I will tell you that I always had the sense that our elected officials were involved in the day-to-day -day operation in a good way. I was the consultant for the benefits program for the county for years and years. So I saw it from a consulting perspective. Um, what I was not aware of is the amount of our CEOs, our senior level staff's time that we as elected officials occupy. And really that's taxpayer money. And, and if we are not additive to the service to the community, if we are simply asking for more and more and more, we're not necessarily beneficial to the program. I will tell you that I am very outspoken. I am. I, I have very little filter between the time something pops into my head and it comes out. Okay. And I, I like do that. that on the dais and I openly speak to that issue. And I think that we've seen it improve a little bit over time. It has also improved because we have changed our CEO in the organization. And I will say one of the, because somewhere in your list of questions might be, what, what do you think the greatest accomplishment is? We had the opportunity to go out and look for a new CEO. CEO. Our former CEO had been there for many, many years, had done a wonderful job, had a new opportunity within the community. She was in a rhythm. 
Okay. We had built a pattern. We, meaning my predecessors, had built a pattern and it was just, this is how we do it. Mm -hmm. And the opportunity to bring in a new CEO brings fresh eyes, fresh perspective. And we went out the first time, we used an external consultant. We sourced several candidates, highly qualified candidates that came before us in the finalist, and we couldn't align around one. Mm -hmm. And I will, I will say very proudly that we did not settle. Okay. which was a good thing. We wanted a 5-0 vote and alignment around we are going to support this new chief executive officer for the organization. And so we brought in a candidate that was the right fit at the right time, at the right place, with the right skill set. And he's bringing in a team that's looking at things through different lens and through the lens of quality improvement. So I've been hammering quality improvement since I've gotten there. And we're just starting to see that become a cultural part of the organization. And once it gets embedded in the culture, then to answer your original question, sure. that influence goes for a very long period of time. Okay. Wow. Similar County, at least for me, I've, I've lived here in Florida in Orange County for about 10 years. So. Well, Seminole's right up the road. We hey. welcome you to move. <laughs> It is beautiful. It is beautiful. It is beautiful country. And there seems to be, from my perspective, a concerted effort by the county commission to conserve and preserve as much of the natural resources and space in Seminole County. And I'm, I'm, I'm very happy that Seminole has made that commitment. And I know that's been an issue for Central Florida for a very long time. Um, you are on the board of the Central Florida Highway Commission? Or yes, Central Florida Authority. Expressway Authority. Expressway Authority, thank the you. FX. Thank you. And I know there's been issues about uh, split oak forest mm -hmm. and having a uh, toll road through split, split oak forest. How would that impact the perception that preservation, a commitment to preservation is forever? Well, it's interesting because the split oak forest story never seems to get completely told. Mm -hmm. and, well, you know, you'll find that shocking. <laughs> um, first of all, one of the things in the in the covenant of that property is that it can be used for a toll road. It's specifically laid out mm -hmm. years ago. Central Florida Expressway Authority doesn't want to run a road right down the middle of a 1500 correct. acre forest. That is not what we're doing. That's although correct. when you see it in the press, that is what you would be led to believe to do. It's running through the very corner of the property, which allows it's 90 Selfless. acres that get cut off, which means that we can't do a, a burn there to keep the property pristine, we can do a burn on the other 1400 acres. And in exchange for that, we are growing that preserve by another 1,500 acres plus. So we're cutting off 90, but doubling the size of the preserve. And that has somehow gotten portrayed as not being preservation conscious. And I, I appreciate the fact that there are folks that are very emotionally attached to that sure. property that don't want to see a thing happen to it. But would you really walk away from the opportunity to double preservation in Orange Osceola County, which is growing like crazy, True. to save 90 acres? Mm -hmm. No one would make that business decision. And so it was a unanimous vote originally on CFX years ago. It was a unanimous, unanimous vote from what I understand at Orange County years ago. Mm -hmm. And it was a unanimous vote at Osceola County years ago. And because we continue to you know, bring it back up in a negative light. I think most people don't understand it. The alternative that it was being talked about as the alternative to that the folks that wanted to keep it out of the forest would tear down a neighborhood, literally go right through a lakefront neighborhood that's been there for years prior to Split Oak. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Not prior to the land. I don't want to get yelled at about mm -hmm. the land's been there forever. The land has been there forever, but before it was put in preserve. Is that like AJ? AJ Estates. Yes. Okay. AJ Estates. Yes. Okay. Yes. I will tell you that I did not take that decision lightly when I was on CFX. I was on CFX back then, not as a commissioner, but as an appointee. 
I went out and toured the property. I was the first commissioner that went out and toured the property. I toured the property with the folks that were against the road coming in and with the engineers that had that as a, as a um, potential alignment. Okay. And so I've seen it personally. I will tell you that it gets described as pristine. I do not believe it was pristine when it was put into preservation because there are, are cattle pits out there. It was at one point ranching land. That's correct. Yes. And the only way I know about that is because there were there were holes that were evenly spaced. And which caused me to ask the question, what are these divots? And somebody said that's you know the cattle dip. And so well, what do they dip a cattle in? And mm -hmm. it's not good stuff. It's not good stuff that goes into the earth when you do that mm -hmm. years ago. And so there was preservation money that was built in when Split Oak was originally uh, granted so that it would be restored, restoration dollars. That same thing was voted on when we said we would take on the additional 1,500 acres. Okay. And so it's the same concept of making sure that it is it comes back to its natural beauty, which is what you see there today. Well. Cool. I'm going to be up, uh, up front, so I'm going to show my, I, I'm, a, I'm already voting for you, so, you know, and you, you, I can't, you can't that. do that. So I'm giving you my You live bond. in Seminole County, I'm, I'm right? Giving, You're not voting for me from Orange County. No, I just want to make sure. Yeah, okay. I do know. I'm I living, just want to make sure. sure that. I live in Castleberry. <laughs> okay. I, I live in the most walkable city in uh, Yes, Seminole yes. County. yes. Castleberry's done a wonderful we job. We are still on it. We're going to be yeah. the, we can be the yep. most walkable city. But listen, I, I'm so excited. I'm so excited <laughs> to have you here. But. What do we what do we say for people like myself who are voting for you? What, you know, why are we giving you four more years on the commission? And that's a that's a really really good question. I think the possibility to change the culture in an organization that had to move a culture from we've always done it this way to daily consistent thought process of how can we improve this will be life-changing for the citizens in the county, not only from an efficiency of government perspective, because you often can do things more efficiently with a better outcome. I spend my day looking at that. If you can do it in healthcare, you can certainly do it in permitting and in, in water okay. treatment. And you're like, go through the whole list of things that we do, right? Mm -hmm. And if we get to change that culture to have a better flywheel around the idea of we're going to expect excellence, we're going to measure it. We don't measure very much right now. I know mm. you'll find this stunning, but it, I don't I don't have the ability to go on as a as an elected official and figure out where we how many outstanding customer service issues do I have at the county today? Really? I don't know that. Oh, wow. We don't dashboard. So I've been pounding mm. the pounding the counter for I want dashboards, I want dashboards, I want the things that matter to the citizens measured and on the website. And, the, you know, there was a little bit of resistance to that, not only from the staff, but from folks that have been there for a very long time saying, but we've always done this and it's worked great. That's not how the world operates anymore. Right. We are changing at a pace that's rapid. The next generation expect things to be done differently. They can't align with the idea that you have to walk up to a counter to get service. Mm -hmm. We've got to advance. Yeah, absolutely. And I will tell you that I am that voice on the commission, that voice. And I now have what I'll call um, willing, willing, willing enthusiasts along with me, not only on the staff, but on the board. And I think we're going to make that change. Awesome. That's fantastic. David? I, to kind of take it a little bit further, um, back to what you were saying about the, the form of government there. Mm -hmm. um, do you find it advantageous that you don't have a, a strong yes. executive? OK. Yes. I love two things about our form of government. Number one, we don't have a strong mayor situation where it's an elected that gets to be the CEO. Quite honestly, anybody can get elected. I think I've proven that. Um, I think I've proven that. And you're qualified. I am qualified. I am. I did not think I was qualified when I was when I ran. And quite honestly, you know, development, land development code is somewhat mystifying. 
there's a lot of moving parts to that. We can all pretend we understand it, but we don't. Mm -hmm. The experts understand it. The engineers understand it. So having somebody that came through those years of working in that environment to be in that CEO position, that by the way, the five of us can terminate and hold accountable on the spot. Okay. Is way different from a strong mayor where you got to go through an election, which right. quite honestly, the term, I mean, look, look, not a surprise for me to say, who knows how elections come out, right? That's true. It's, right? That's it's, very it's, true. It's a crazy business. So I love that. I also love that we are elected at large. Right. So I run the race in the entire county. Everyone in the county is my constituent. I serve my district and have to live in my district. So I understand the issues in my district because it's in my traffic pattern. And, you know, Seminole's not that big geographically, but it still matters that I drive it every day. However, if a citizen from another district calls my office, we have a protocol where we engage the district commissioner. Okay. But if they felt they weren't getting help there, we help. And we all do it. Okay. Different set of eyes that looks at the same issue. We notify staff. Staff has a protocol where they notify each other if multiple of us are working on it. We So we try not to step on each other's toes. We do a really good job of that. I will admit I had a few fumbles in the beginning around, you know, not realizing that somebody was working on something because I didn't ask the right questions in my district. Does the um, sunshine laws count? Kind of well, it all happens through our aides. Okay. We have staff that does all of that interaction. Sure. So yeah, there's not a sunshine law issue. We're not necessarily speaking to each other about it, okay. but our teams are doing all of that work behind the scenes. So it's important that your team is yeah. competent in yes. their communication yes. with other yes. teams. But very good. Yes. Right. Well, my question is, how That's do we... a good question though. That right. was a good question because that it did sound like we're all sitting around talking to each other about the issues. Yeah. And that's not the case. Well, Commissioner Way and the I'm from, originally from Chicago, so we do things different. Of no course. sunshine up there. <laughs> none, <laughs> none at all. So, and, and so when I first started, you know, politics here in Florida and understanding the sunshine law, it's like, well, you know, you could move things a little bit simpler, quicker, more efficiently if there was that communication. And I see here in Orange County, the commissioners kind of pulling over themselves, stepping over just to make sure that they're not in violation of the sunshine laws. Yeah. I find that so cumbersome. Cumbersome is a good word. I would say that it's at times it's quite limiting. Mm -hmm. It slows everything down because we're relegated to the every two in our cycle. It's every two weeks for a meeting. Sure. Staff spends a lot of time. And, and by the way, a staff member can't come in and say, here's what the other commissioners think. So they have to, they have to make sure they're packaging, packaging things up. So they're not a, conduit um and they've become quite quite good at that excellent so it does slow government down and at the same time i also moved here from another state a very long time ago when i was 18. new jersey new jersey yes. south jersey the okay. garden state okay. blueberry capital of the world ah, um and so I've seen things done differently. And when I moved down here, things were done differently. And I don't know that we want to go back to that. Okay. But there should there be maybe some opportunities of clarifying? And, uh, you know, I don't know the answer to that. It's hard to clarify a practical application of a law. And once you start to put holes in it, you know, do we eat away at it? But it is cumbersome. It's a good description of it. Thank you. Thank you. Well, my question is simply, uh, how do we get involved? Uh, how do we donate? How do we get involved in your campaign? Uh, what efforts you know, are going forward? That's kind of where my interests lie because I want to know where my boots need to be when we get on the ground. So I do have an opponent at the moment. We Neither of us have qualified. Qualifying hasn't happened yet. So once qualifying has happened and we're hitting the ground, I'll need volunteers to knock on doors. You can donate. That should be the first thing I ask for every single time at vote for F O R V O T E F O R her H E R R dot com. And uh, there's a donate button there. There's information there. There's opportunities to volunteer. I am simply out raising money now uh, because it takes just countywide is different from a district yes. race. We have to touch the entire county in terms of getting the message out there. So 
it's a significant effort. Those efforts are going extremely well. Um, I am truly honored by the people that have put faith in me to be able to do this again. Um, first of all, to do it the first time, because <laughs> that was a giant leap of faith. Mm -hmm. And to, to have that validation that I'm, I'm doing what they want me to do is, is amazing. But I will take all the help that I can get. Uh, I have a tremendous amount of support from my family. Um, but the last time I had full-time support from a couple of kids that I was still supporting and I'm no longer supporting them. So I have a little less. <laughs> so yay and oh. <laughs> but I'm very proud of my two boys. They're both full-time employed. Uh, my older son from the time of the first campaign till now passed all four parts of the CPA exam. Excellent. And so, and my younger son finished uh, with a bachelor's degree and is working for a firm downtown. So nice. they're all grown up. Do either son have aspirations for politics? I think they don't anymore. And if they ever <laughs> did, they probably don't anymore. Uh, my younger son was is very politically engaged, always tuned in. Um, I don't think he has aspirations for it. And my older son has surprised me at every single turn of his life. So I don't know. Okay. Um, but he's a heck of a campaign treasurer. I will tell you that there's oh, no I that doesn't job. get dotted. Yeah, that is a tough job. Yeah, I'm often hearing, "Mom, you didn't fill out this form right." Uh oh. Uh oh. At least you have somebody looking yeah. over your shoulder. Yeah. Oh wow. And happy belated Mother's Day. Well, thank you. Thank you. It was a great day. Excellent. So David always has a gotcha question. I don't know if he had. You got a, a gotcha I, question. I don't know if he had a chance to prepare for you. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, oh you always, always have one. Oh yeah. This, I, He's like super thrilled about this. Look at yes, this. It's like a bigger smile. On your face. <laughs> All right, let's see how we do. So you're running for your second term yes. as commissioner, and this has been your only political only experience. If the call comes to lead at a higher level, is that something you're willing to consider? <laughs> so so first of all, I'm gonna give David credit for being the first maybe knucklehead that's ever asked me that. <laughs> I really don't think that I have to worry about that. So, you so never know. You know. no, well, you, you do never know. And, you know, I, I, I will not say no, just because I would have said, if you asked me 10 years ago, if I'd ever be doing what I'm doing right now, I would have said, Oh, hell no, right. not doing that. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe I've matured and learned that you you don't know the answer to the questions of the future. I don't see myself in a bigger, in a bigger role. Um, but I, and, and most importantly, I don't think I'm getting that call. So I don't think I need to worry about that. Well, but you, thank you that you thought that that was a good question oh, for yes. me. I'll leave here feeling validated. <laughs> and you get called knucklehead. I, I did. It. Yes. <laughs> no one's calling me, buddy. That's, that's, no one's calling me. So I just want to tell our audience, if you live in Seminole County, you've had a great opportunity to meet with the commissioner. Make comments. We'll share them with her. We're going to share this uh, information with her so she can share it on her social media. Like, share. Make sure the message gets out there. Make sure you get those donations. Make sure that you're doing your part to make sure that our commission in Seminole County is strong and has five good commissioners working together. And right now you're our vice chair, correct? I am. So Excellent. as the vice chair, it's time to get up and get out there. You have anything else you get to, you get I to, get finish, to close, you get to close well, with so I, I'll just say thank you for having me. Thank, thank you, you for I, the last minute curveball that I threw you in terms of location. I appreciate the time with you. I appreciate the questions and I appreciate your interest in Seminole County. And the last thing I'll leave you with is whatever you do, vote for her. All right. This is You Can't Make This Shit Up. We are your political innovators. And today, I'm Knucklehead. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, yes, Commissioner. You're welcome. You're welcome. Appreciate you're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. We're out of here. You were, you were, you were.